the AI will be connected to the human brain. Uh, and so what's connecting to the human brain? Uh, well, these different levels of AI, including this archontic consciousness, which is behind all this. And that level of the so-called AI um, is designed to um, absorb the human mind and absorb it into itself. Um, so I've called this process in my books, the assimilation, where this archontic consciousness assimilates the human mind into itself. Um, and therefore, human minds become, if you like, computer terminals of it. Um, and this is where AI is ultimately going. Um, but they try to keep it on the level of robots and technology, so mm. people don't see where this is um, ultimately going. So the idea is in the end, and this has been the process, it's been the process from the start of this hijack of human society way back, way, way back. It's been a process of bringing humanity to the point where it can be assimilated. Now, if you try to assimilate human consciousness technologically, while um, humans are knocking rocks together and living in caves, well, you, well, you forget it. Mm -hmm. What you've got to do is you've got to bring human, the human mind to a point where it is clever enough to build its own prison, but not wise enough to see that that's what it's doing. And so you've had um, the development um, through the system. I mean, look at the education system. It's all about the left side of the brain. It's all about what we call intellect. It's mm -hmm. not about wisdom. It's not about expanding consciousness, anything but the opposite. It's about intellectual development. And so the intellect, which is the village idiot compared with expanded consciousness, has been developed to the point um, where it can build this smart grid. But it's not wise enough to see if that's what it's doing. The whole idea is that by the time people see what's happening, it's too late. That's why people like me are trying to say, hey, look what's happening before it's too late. And so what we're looking at is um, a process of using technology to assimilate the human mind into this archontic consciousness so the human mind disappears, which is exactly what occurs while saying not telling you why, but he's telling you. And the reason that they're telling you openly is because of the sales pitch. Sales pitch is you connect to artificial intelligence and you'll become superhuman, you'll become gods. Actually, you will become superhuman and post, uh, subhuman and posthuman. That's where um, this is um, uh, actually going. And um, this addiction to smartphones, mm. uh, etc., this addiction to tablets and what have you, is all part of the process, pulling humanity along, you know, here, kitty, 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 towards the point where people say, well, the natural next step is to connect to the human, the human mind to artificial intelligence. Um, you want to get um, technology in the body that will um, connect the body and the systems of the brain uh, to artificial intelligence. If you um, take away the smartphones, you take away the the next stage, which is things that you wear on the body that's connected to the internet. Take them away and try to go from the pre-smartphone era to connecting the human brain to AI. You will have no chance. You want to do what? Um, so what you do, you do it in steps, what, yeah. what I call the totalitarian tiptoe. So the first step was to, the first step was to introduce mobile phones, and then you introduce smartphones. That's when it really starts to ramp up. The idea is to get people addicted to that technology which they hold, and particularly the young. Why? Because the young will be the adults when this stuff is meant to come in full blown. So you need to bring them along psychologically so that they will accept that. 
You take, you know, my generation from the 1950s, the vast majority of them would not accept that because they haven't been through that programming uh, process, but with an and, uh, preparation process, but the young today have. And so, you know, as, as we talked about, um, there's something coming off these phones which are adding to the addiction and adding to the, uh, the way that they mesmerize kids. The brain works electrically and electromagnetically. And so what's happened, and digitally, by the way, and what's happening is this, what's coming off these phones is um, changing the nature of the brain. It's making the brain addicted to that digital frequency and that electrical, electromagnetic frequencies that are coming off the, the, off, the, um, off the phones. And, you know, people thought for a long time, scientists thought for a long time, of course, because they're always right, um, that um, the brain, once formed, never changed. They now know that that is not only not the case, it is actually the opposite of the truth. Mm -hmm. There's something called brain placidity. Brain placidity um, is when the brain changes in the way that it processes information on the basis of the information it's received. So the information it's receiving changes the nature of the brain and how it processes uh, and how the neuron networks form and fire. So in the next to bloody no time, really, um, the brain has been bombarded for the first time in known human history with this digital electrical stimulus. And it is transforming through brain placidity the brains of people who um, become addicted to this stuff. So the way that young people who, who are addicted to smartphones, etc., the way their brains process information has changed and it continues to change. And thus their perceptions that come from that information will be very different from someone who's not been through that process of brain placidity change. And um, the brain also becomes addicted to that stimulus. And this is how it goes. You, you pick up the phone um, and you are looking at the phone and you basically go through all the information that you think you're interested in. You put it down. And then the brain's going, where's my fix? Where's my stimulus? And the person picks up the phone. They won't know why they're picking up the phone. They'll just pick up the phone and it will go. It's almost uh, zombie-like in the way that it's done. Because the brain's running the show. It's saying, where's my fix? What is your fix? Oh, thank God for that. Ooh, yeah. Um, and so that addiction is stage one. And then you, you're trying to get in the body. Uh, so you, the next stage is to go on the body. And this is all this stuff, the, the, the Bluetooth, the uh, Apple watches, and all this stuff now that you put on the body that connects you to the internet, your heart rate and all this stuff. Oh God, how did we survive before? I can't, I can't believe it. Um, and, uh, and now we're moving to the next stage, which is, which is in the body. And, um, and that's microchips. And people read my books from the 1990s, even the early 1990s, really. Um, I was talking about the, the goal of this uh, uh, conspiracy is to get microchips in people and connect them to a global computer system. Exactly what is happening. You know, in Sweden, thousands of people have now been microchipped quite openly and, and uh, by their own consent um, because they can they can open doors and open their front door without having a key. I mean, you know, I mean, I, again, how do we survive having to use keys? What a nightmare. Um, but because of the addiction because of the conditioning of the relationship with technology um, and the way that technology is constantly being portrayed as the friend, um, the, it's not questioned by so many people. Uh, what are the consequences of having a microchip in yeah. my body? It, it, it's not, not uh, uh, even uh, questioned because moving to the next state of, uh, level of technology has become almost a way of life. This is why you have these big long queues of people standing in line in the dead of morning so that they can be the one of the first to get the next Apple phone or something. They don't even wait till the, you know, it, it gets light and go tomorrow or something. 